Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Oh, man, this election. There is a lot going on, but guess what? We're not going to talk about it. Not on this show. Not on the podcast today. Not worth it. It's everywhere else. And those of you who are tuning into this podcast are not tuning in for election news right now. So we'll leave all of that for another time, another podcast, and we will stick to the topic at hand. And that topic is Jeffrey Mother Effin Epstein, something that all of us, Republican and Democrat alike, can get on board with and agree that that guy was an absolute asshole. So, we have a new situation with two of Ghislaine Maxwell's accusers. Now, we know that Jennifer Arreas was somebody who says that she was assaulted by Jeffrey, uh, by Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell, and she was not involved in that compensation fund, at least last we heard. According to her and her lawyer, they were going all the way to the mattresses and they were going to see this out till the very end. Well, it looks like Jennifer Oreos and um, one of the unnamed accusers have dropped their lawsuits against Ghislaine Maxwell. And that looks like and it seems like they would do that because they are part of that compensation fund now. That would be my guess. And that would be the guess of most people who are following the story, right? There's no reason for them to just drop their cases. So maybe we'll hear about some movement from the compensation fund in the next few days. Uh, Not too sure one way or the other. Hopefully we do. Um, We know that they're getting a nice injection of cash considering the Palm Beach mansion has been sold. And it's looking like about 18 million will be coming their way for the Palm Beach mansion alone. Now, you add in the New York townhouse, if they're going to be able to flip that anytime soon, figure it's sitting on the market at 77 million. If I was making an offer, I'd come in at about 73.5 and, and see if they bit. But again, who the hell knows? I think it's a different situation than in Palm Beach. You're not just going to go into that place and tear it down, right? And rebuild it. I mean, it's just, that's not, that's not practical. That's not going to happen. So I really don't know who they're going to get to purchase that place. There's a lot of bad memories there, a lot of bad juju around it. And who the hell wants to live in that townhouse and have a bunch of people outside gawking at it all the time? I think I'd pass on that. So I'm, I'm thinking there's going to be a little bit of difficulty flipping the house in New York. Um, the island, obviously, I think that should be an easy sell. I don't know why that hasn't been sold yet. If I had uh, the, the sort of money that these bipedal serpents have, I would have purchased that island already. And then I would have turned it into a retreat for survivors of abuse and disease and whatever. Survivors in general would have been welcomed on my island if I was a billionaire and I was able to purchase Little St. James. And that island would be opened for free to anybody who has suffered trauma, PTSD, whatever. And I would make sure that I had it staffed accordingly with the right people to try and help people through this. I mean, is that where are all of these billionaires that act like they care that pump all this money into elections and get up there and bullshit you and act like they really give a shit about you, but they don't. Do you really think that if you couldn't pay your rent and you went to insert celebrity here, they'd give a shit about you? They would not. That's why I don't understand the whole entire hero worship type of situation. It's just, it's always been foreign to me. It will always be foreign to me. And I will never, ever, ever understand it. All right, so let's jump into our article. This article is from the Daily Mail and the headline, Two Jeffrey Epstein accusers dropped their case against his estate, Ghislaine Maxwell, indicating they have been awarded money under Victims' Compensation Fund. The author of this article is Matthew Wright. And if that is the case, and it does look like that, right? Again, there's no good reason for uh, these two gals to drop their cases in the middle of the case, unless, of course, there's something going on on the back burner. And that is very possible. Um, I would say it's probably likely, to be honest with you. 
because I really just don't see these these gals dropping their cases. It just does not ring as something that is logical to me. Two women who were victims of Jeffrey Epstein have both independently dropped their cases against the pedophile's estate and Ghislaine Maxwell, according to new court documents. Jennifer Oreo sued Maxwell, said to be Epstein's madam, co-conspirator, general all-around scuzzbag and bipedal serpent, in September for allegedly assisting in her recruitment as a sex slave when she was 14. Now, remember, Oreos was, and her lawyer were very adamant that they were going to see this through to the very end. So something must have come up. They must have gotten or received a very, very, very favorable uh, determination from this compensation fund and decided it was in their best interest and in the best interest of, of Jennifer herself to take the, the, the offered money. Now, again, I don't have inside information on that, right? I don't have a line. I don't know Jennifer or her lawyer. But this is what the, log- the logical thought pattern leads you to the fact that they're probably starting to pay out some money from this compensation fund. Now, I don't know if that's ever going to be announced. I, I doubt it will be as far as details, right? I'm sure it's going to be a pretty private matter. And then at some point, they will come out and say that they've dispersed X amount of money or something like that. That would be my guess. But... I'd really like to start seeing some of these survivors get made whole. Got plenty of money in the estate, got $18 million on the way. Let's start getting some of these claims paid out and let's start letting these, these gals move on with their lives and start to rebuild what, what has been stolen from them. So I think this might be a positive sign in that direction, knowing that uh, Jennifer Oreos and the unnamed uh, Jane Doe have both dropped their suits, especially considering how adamant Miss Oreos was. Oreos dropped her lawsuit against the British socialite, co-conspirator, general all-around scuzzbag and bipedal serpent, on Monday, according to a Manhattan Supreme Court filing, the New York Post reports. So, it was filed in the Supreme Court of New York. That was where the original lawsuit was, was filed, remember? It wasn't filed at, in the SDNY or with Judge Nathan or anything like that. There was a completely different judge. It was a completely different case. And it was being um, heard in the Supreme Court of, New, of Manhattan. So now that it's been dropped, I'm very interested to see what sort of movement we have here and if this starts the ball rolling on some information trickling out. Now, I don't know if there's some sort of stipulation within the compensation fund as far as the survivors not being able to talk about the amount they receive. You know, there's always some BS in the, in the, um, in the, little, uh, the little words at the bottom of the page, right? There's always some nonsense. So I'm curious if there's any sort of restrictions on them talking about the amounts that they received if they wanted to, right? An unidentified woman who sued Epstein's estate in December has also dropped her claims, according to court records from Friday. The woman, who anonymously sued under the name Jane Doe 7, was part of a group of nine accusers in the suit. She claimed in the lawsuit that she was sexually abused by Epstein in 2007 when she was 22 years old. So, again, that's the unnamed Doe that we've talked about. This is all context for us. We've, we've talked about all of this. We've covered this. And we are, you know, all up to date when it comes to these lawsuits and where we're going. The only thing we really don't have any, uh, any idea of as far as particulars is the compensation fund. But this story tonight just adds more context and follows along with the thread of Jennifer Oreos, um, the unnamed Jane Doe 7, and the other girls in the suit. This is just another avenue, right? We know that there are many layers to this case and it gets confusing. So my goal is to try and keep things as organized and locked in as we possibly can. To try and swim through the muck and get to the good stuff. The two dropping their cases could reflect that they were awarded money from the victim's compensation fund set up for Epstein's accusers. 
Again, that definitely is what it looks like. I can't confirm that one way or the other. But if history is a roadmap to the future, and a lot of times it is, then I would guess that there are payments being made and that we'll hear more about it in the coming weeks or months. In a separate suit against Epstein's estate, Areos claimed that the pedophile raped her, raped her when she was just 15. The case is still pending. Okay, so it's a separate suit against the state. And for Jennifer Areos, that suit is still pending. That's interesting. So I wonder how this is all going to turn out. Obviously, I'll keep my eye on it. And as soon as a report hits the news, we'll be here. We'll add it to the catalog and we'll see what sort of context that provides. Last week, Areos launched a foundation to help other victims of sexual abuse, uh, which is a really great idea. You should check into that. Just uh, look up uh, Jennifer Areos and her foundation if you're interested in something like that and see what she has to offer over there. The trial of Ghislaine Maxwell is not scheduled to start until July, but prosecutors must turn over oh, turn over evidence to her lawyers by Monday. And that's what we discussed um, last night. Right. When we were talking about the the evidence and how discovery phase, the deadline come, is coming up Monday and how the, the prosecution needs to have all of the documents turned over to the defense by then. Now, they've already turned over like some 350,000 pages, but we're talking a, a tranche of like 1.2 million documents. So it's going to be a bunch of documents that have to be sent over and processed by the defense. And that's on schedule for Monday, according to the prosecution. Maxwell has pleaded not guilty to charges alleging that she recruited three girls in the mid-1990s for Epstein to abuse. Epstein killed himself, allegedly, in a Manhattan federal lockup in August 2019 as he awaited trial on sex trafficking charges. On October 30th, prosecutors said in a letter to a Manhattan federal court judge that they will in the next week give Maxwell's lawyers over 1.2 million documents from devices seized from Epstein's residences. So, again, there's the prosecution coming out on record once again and saying they will meet that deadline, that the defense will have the documents that they've been promised and those documents will be delivered by the date specified by the court, and that is this coming Monday. So we'll keep our eye on that as well. I'm pretty interested to see what what goes on there. And usually there are some really, really juicy tidbits in discovery phase, right? So I'm wondering about leaks, et cetera, et cetera. We'll have to keep our ear to the ground and see what turns up. They say they've turned over more than 350,000 pages of documents, including search warrants, subpoena returns, and some records related to law enforcement investigations of Epstein. So, again, 350,000 documents, that is not a small amount. They have turned over uh, roughly, what, a third or so to Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyers. And with the deadline looming, I am sure that there is going to be a mass dump very soon. So we'll see. We will see. And also remember, there is some evidence that the prosecution does not want to turn over until two months away from the start of the trial. So I'm interested to see how that works out as well. And if Judge Nathan acquiesces to their request and lets them do that. Very interesting stuff. I'm fascinated by the way all of this is working in the federal courts. You know, again, I've never really followed a case this closely as it winds its way through the court system. So there's a lot of things I'm learning right along with you folks, right? Certainly not a lawyer, definitely not a lawyer. But when you dive in and you start trying to make heads or tails of it, the only way to properly do that is to have the right context. And for me, it's been just hugely, hugely valuable to have all of these articles that we have went through and we've read together and we've put into the catalog because it paints the picture, right? It builds the whole entire blueprint of what's going on. Defense lawyers have complained since Maxwell's July arrest that prosecutors are slow walking the turnover of evidence the defense needs to prepare its arguments to challenge charges against the 58-year-old bipedal serpent. The arguments are due December 21st. Epstein, 
died in jail, allegedly, awaiting his sex trafficking trial in August 2019. So December 21st is creeping up, folks. That is going to be something. I am really looking forward to that. The arguments and discovery phase, always going to be exciting. And obviously, if we have access to the phone system to call in and listen to the proceedings, I will obviously do that because, as you all know, I like to get it directly from the source if I can. So we got a lot of things going on. A lot of things are cooking. There's a lot of frying pans over the fire. And like usual, we have more questions than answers. So all we can keep doing is keep, you know, fighting our way upstream, trying to avoid the bullshit, and trying to process the actual information that is tangible to the case. So we'll just keep doing our best at, you know, reading between the lines and analyzing the news in this Epstein case as best that I can. As for tonight and the daily drop, I'm not sure if I'm going to have a daily drop tonight. I might just have a flashback episode. Obviously, there's a lot going on with the election still, and uh, I just have I have stuff going on today. So I'm not positive about a daily drop. There might be one, but if not, there definitely will be a flashback episode. So either way, if there's no daily drop, obviously, I'll be back tomorrow morning to kick it back into overdrive and see where we're at. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All of the links, including the PayPal link, can be found in the description box. All right, folks, try and have a good day, all right? Not too much stress. Try and relax a little bit. I'll catch you folks on the flip side.